Okay, digital imaging. Uh, this next practice, we're going to be using some align tools and also the Pathfinder tool here. So uh, one thing is, remember that with Illustrator, if you want to make sure that you have the same settings that I do, there's a couple different ways that you can do that. Uh, first things that you can do is if you go up to Window and then go to Workspace, uh, I'm on Essentials Classic. Anytime you lose any tools or you lose any of your window panes, um, I would go up to Window and go to Workspace and do Essentials Classic. That's what we use here throughout the semester. Um, there's another way to change those settings. Uh, if those settings aren't correct here, you can go up to Preferences. On a PC, it's going to be in Edit. On mine, it's going to be in uh, Inside Preferences here. So you can go to General, and if you go to General and then go to, uh, let's see, <clears throat> reset all warning dialogues this will reset all your preferences back to uh, the default version of Illustrator um, but I would only do that unless you have after you've done the workspace reset here okay all right so first thing we're going to do is we're going to be using our uh, align tool option so you should have two layers here you're going to have this layer here that's locked our text layer which has everything on it and then we have this layer here, which you're going to use for uh, editing things here. <clears throat> okay. Um, first thing you'll do is you will, um, we're going to be using the horizontal align tool option here. So we're going to select this. And you can use your align tool a couple different ways. Uh, either it's going to be up here at the top. I like to use it over here in my uh, window panel area here. So I'm going to pull that off. <clears throat> so to align something, you can align it a couple different ways. Um, this is our align tool. You can distribute things. We'll talk about that later on. Um, but if I click on this horizontal align, that's going to align everything. I'm going to press Control Z. The other way to align things is to create a key object, which will align it to everything else, um, which we'll do down here at the bottom. Okay. So I'm, I've got everything selected. I'm going to press my horizontal align. This next one I'm going to use is my vertical align. So I'm going to align everything vertical. Remember, if you want to see what some of these things do, you can um, hover over that, and then I'll tell you how to align that, OK? <clears throat> uh, that's our vertical align. And then we can align things uh, based on a center here, uh, which I'm going to pick one object. And you can pick whichever one you want. So I'm going to click once on that shape. And what's going to happen is that's going to uh, align everything based on this shape here. So I'm going to click on this vertical align. And then I also want to distribute this. So I'm going to distribute this um, horizontally. And again, I've got this piece selected. I'm going to have this set at zero. And that's going to align these and, all sp and space them all out like that. OK? I'm going to do the same thing with this one here. I'm going to click on that. I'm going to align them based on this one here and click once. And then I'm going to align this horizontally in the center there like that. And then I'm going to add a little bit of space here. So I'm going to uh, put my spacing at 1. And then I'm going to hor horizontally distribute this here like that. OK? It's actually, I'm going to bump that up to 3. Mm, let's go a little bit more here. OK? And that way you can add distance between things. So if I wanted to add distance on this one, I could do the same thing. And that'll add that distance, automatic distance there. OK. <clears throat> uh, the next thing we're going to do is we're going to be using a clipping mask. Um, so I'm going to bring this back. I'm going to pull this back into my uh, Windows pane here. Uh, the next thing we're going to be using is we're going to be doing a clipping mask. And a clipping mask is where I use a shape to uh, cut out other pieces here. And it's a little bit different than the Pathfinder tool, which we're going to use next here. So for the clipping mask, I've got this oval shape on top that I have these uh, gradient lines here underneath I'm gonna select everything so I'm gonna click and drag and select all those and then I'm gonna go up to object clipping mask and make and what that should do is cut that piece out now <clears throat> this is a, uh, these pieces are all still here uh, but they're hidden from view here so if I want to ever release my clipping mask I can do that so if I go up to object go to clipping mask and release I can release that. When I do do that, uh, for some reason, it gets rid of the fill on that. And then I can go back <clears throat> and make. I can also edit things with my clipping mask. So if I go up to Object and then go to Edit Contents, that'll let me edit some of these contents um, in real time here. So if I want to kind of move this up a little bit you know, and change where that is, I could do something like that. 
okay? <clears throat> All right, so the next piece we're gonna use is we're gonna be using our eraser tool and our scissors and knife tool. And they all cut things, but they all do things a little bit different here. So the first one I'm gonna grab is grab my eraser tool. So just like the brush tool, with the eraser tool, you can make your eraser bigger or smaller by using your bracket keys. So the right bracket key increases my brush size and the left bracket key will decrease my brush size. Okay, <clears throat> how the eraser tool works though is you need to have the thing that you are uh, erasing selected first. So for example, if I tried to like erase this shape over here, nothing's gonna happen because I don't have that shape selected. Okay, I'm just gonna cut off a few pieces here. And that's my eraser. Um, what the eraser does is kind of creates uh, a path where you cut through those things and it'll separate those out. Okay. Uh, with the scissors tool, with the scissors tool, what I can do is I can click once and then create a path and it'll connect those two paths and then it should separate those out here like that. And I can cut those off like that. And then the knife tool works similarly, similarly to the uh, scissors tool, but instead of making two paths, kind of like the pin tool, you draw with the knife tool. So if I want to cut something like that, I can do that and then you'll notice that it keeps that stroke on those shapes and then I'm grabbing the direct selection tool and cutting those pieces off like that okay <clears throat> all right the next tool we're gonna be using is we're gonna be using our pathfinder tool so I'm gonna grab my selection tool and we're just gonna go through these individual here so uh, my pathfinder tool is this tool here remember if you can't find that you could also go up to window and then go to pathfinder and that's gonna bring that so the first one we're going to use is we're going to be using Unite, which we did earlier on that first tutorial. So I'm going to click on Unite. So that's going to combine those shapes together, make them all one single piece, and then you'll notice it keeps that stroke. Uh, the next one I'm going to be using is use minus front. And you can see these little diagrams kind of give you an idea of what they do. And uh, if you hover over it, it'll also tell you what the, what the tool is here. Okay. So minus front is going to cut that circle out from the front of that. Intersect is going to leave where those two pieces overlap. It's going to leave those two pieces there like that. And then Exclude is going to just cut out those pieces where they overlap and leave everything else. If I wanted to get rid of this stroke on this, I could to kind of show you a little bit better of what's, what it's doing here. Okay, the next one we're going to be using is Divide. Okay, and that's going to divide all those pieces into separate ones. So if I grab my direct selection tool, I have all these pieces separated out. <coughs> I'm going to add the trim tool, and that's going to get rid of my stroke here, and then separate those pieces out like that. Merge is going to work uh, similar to the Unite option, and those two pieces are going to merge together like that. Or if I select them, they're all kind of grouped together. And then I'm going to grab my Crop tool and do that. So you can see some similarities between like the Crop tool and the Intersect tool. Okay, and then I'm going to grab Outline. Which is just going to leave the outlines of those there. Okay. And then the last one is going to be minus back. Whoops. And so it's going to cut that out there. So there's minus front and then minus back. And you kind of see sort of the opposite of them here. Okay. Then the last tool that we're going to use is we're going to be using our blob brush and the blob brush works a little bit differently than like the paintbrush. Um, so if you remember with the paintbrush it works where if you draw it'll apply a brush to the line that you've made and then I can kind of change those brushes here. Blob brush works a little bit different so instead of making a line on a path what the blob brush does is it creates uh, separate pieces here. So if I want to paint in this piece here, when I select this, you'll notice that it's going to be one uh, one solid shape here. Instead of it's going to be one vector shape instead of being a, a line with a brush applied to it. The other cool thing about the blob brush is that when you paint with it, uh, normally it will 
um, connect those pieces. So if I want to connect these together and they're all the same color, it should connect those all together. Yeah. Um, if I want to use the blob brush, I can change different colors and it will keep those separated out. That's not what I meant to do. So if I want to go in with like an orange, I can grab my blob brush and it'll make those separate pieces here. Okay. So what I want you to do for this piece here is we're going to color this. I'm just going to grab like green here. I'm actually going to grab my eyedropper. I like that green. And then I'm going to grab my blob brush. I'm just going to go in and expand this out a little bit. There we go. Okay, I want to set this behind this piece here, and then I'm going to grab my eraser tool and erase these parts that I don't need. So I'm going to go back to my eraser tool, and I'm having trouble finding it for some reason. Where did my eraser tool go? Ah, here it is. So then I'm going to go in and I'm just going to kind of carefully erase some of these parts inside here so you can use your eraser tool. The other tool we could use for this would actually be our shape builder tool and I'm going to use that for this other part of it to kind of show you some of the different tools that you can use here. Okay. So I could use that and then I'm also going to grab the shape builder tool. This is going to be a good tool for that. So my shape builder tool is here. And I'm going to have both these shapes selected. Okay, and then grab my shape builder. And remember, if I hold my uh, Alt key down, I can toggle between deleting and adding stuff. So if I delete that, it'll make much better work of that here like that. Okay. Um, the other thing that you can do with the blob brush is you can also paint with it and you can paint gradients. So if I grab this, I can grab my um, eyedropper tool and then I can paint with this brush here. So let me shrink this down a little bit and I'll paint in those solid shapes for that. So if I want to paint like that. Okay, I'm going to put this behind it and set that behind and then I could go back in with my blob brush so maybe I want to grab and add some other colors to this, add some other petals maybe so maybe I want to put like this pink up here. Maybe I want to add some green leaves on this too with my blob brush. <clears throat> it's a little bit too big. Okay, and then I can select this and bring that all the way to the front there like that. Okay, and then maybe I want to add, uh, I'll just leave that kind of like that. Okay, so those are the align tools, the clipping mask tool, the eraser and the scissors tool, the different options you have with the pathfinder tool, and then the blob brush, with also the shape builder, and then this blob brush here. Okay.